Welcome to FA Cup Classics, where we're looking back at one of the most memorable finals of recent years, the 1990 clash between Manchester United and Crystal Palace. Manchester United won an epic semi-final replay against second division Oldham Athletic to claim their place in the final. The first game had seen United held 3-all, but the Reds finally settled a tie in extra time of the replay. This goal from Mark Robbins clinching a 2-1 win. Palace had pulled off one of the shocks of the tournament by knocking out cup holders Liverpool in their semi-final, especially after Liverpool had thrashed them 9-0 in the league meeting earlier that season. This extra-time goal from Alan Pardew sealed a 4-3 win for the Eagles. The final was a particularly special occasion for both managers. Palace boss Steve Koppel won the cup as a former United player. Whilst for Alex Ferguson, this was a golden opportunity to secure his first trophy as United manager. Well, the ingredients here, in keeping with the compelling tradition of this marvellous competition, one famous finalist, Manchester United, against a club of more humble history, Crystal Palace. The reality is that both sides finished on the same points total in the first division, and Palace were good enough to win at Old Trafford when the teams last met. Crystal Palace kick off in the 1990 FA Cup final. Andy Gray, you've been studying the faces. What sort of mood do you predict from the two sides? Well, they both look very relaxed, but I think all the talking's over with. The players will be delighted now that the game's actually underway. I always hated this 10 minutes as you walked out the tunnel and got ready, national anthem, the nerves started to get to you. They'll be delighted now. All the wall want, all 22 now, will want to get a touch of the ball as quickly as possible. Forward from Lee Martin, Manchester United, as you will have spotted in a chain strip of all white. Crystal Palace won that little battle, the toss of the coin because of the uh, colour clash with first choice kit. Bright, with plenty of licence to roam. I think mentioning that fact, the man-for-man -man marking, if ever there was a game going to be won on individual outcomes, it's got to be today with about eight Palace players, as you said earlier, really designated to mark specific Manchester United players Whichever the majority come out on top, looks like the team that will win the cup. Well, there's some quizzical looks on Manchester United faces, but it is a free kick earned for Palace by Gray. Steve Koppel. So much has been made of the fact that he is a former Manchester United player, but as he said himself, it wouldn't matter who he was playing against. It's just a thrill to lead a team out here, and uh, he's making a note. Alec Ferguson keeping it uh, locked away in his mind. Don't let Steve kid you on. There's nothing better as an ex-pro than turning over your old team, and he knows that as well as anyone. Billy Wright in the centre of the picture there with his wife, the former Joy Beverly of the Beverly Sisters. So Gray is OK. Barber takes the free kick. And is it over the line? Gary O'Reilly got to it. Crystal Palace with a set piece. Just as they did to Liverpool, they've done to Manchester United. Well, even this early on, Manchester United have given far too many free kicks away in dangerous areas. This one comes over, a few people go up. Gary O'Reilly will tell you, that was my last touch and Steve Bruce can do nothing but help on its way. And it must have been the one area where Manchester United were worried. Comes over, Jim Leighton gets caught a little bit coming out. Should he have stayed, now he will wonder. Now Pallister. Crystal Palace have everyone but Mark Bright behind the ball. And they want Bright to hold it up here. That's uh, just the job, really, but Gray thought he was pushed. 
Alan Gunn saw nothing wrong. Lee Martin takes it on. Ince for McClare. Can Wallace reach it? He does. McClare. Robson! <laughs> one one. Ten minutes to go to half time. Oh, you wouldn't have bet this man against this man getting his team back in the game. But they've been threatening for the last two or three minutes. He's been a great ball in there. And there's this, the man that Alec Ferguson put so much faith in at the back post with a great little header. Danny Wallace nipped in in the manner that he scored a goal at Newcastle, but there was no angle for him then. And John Pemberton actually got a touch to it. The 1990 FA Cup final living up to all expectations. Bruce. Webb. McClare. Well, it would have been a little hard on Palace. The danger's not over yet. McClare! Oh, dear. Alec Ferguson was up off the bench, convinced, I think, that his team must score. Well, I think Alec Ferguson would have scored this in his day, I'm quite sure of it. This is a magnificent chance from Brian McClare. He must be wondering why he's missed this. It's a great ball in, and there's no excuse really for missing the target. And had he hit the target, almost certainly a goal. The first half really has flown by, and in a way, it hasn't produced too many surprises. I think both managers really guessed what the other's strategy would be. And it's been fascinating, really, to see how they've tried to break down those plans. Both sides have had moments of success. Crystal Palace would certainly have hoped to have pressured Jim Layton. Had a free kick or two, they did that. To take the lead through Gary O'Reilly's header. Manchester United would have expected Brian Robson to arrive late in the Palace County area, and Steve Copper would have known all about that, but he couldn't stop, or his team couldn't stop, Robson equalising. An excellent first half. It's Crystal Palace 1, Manchester United 1. So 1-1 one, one as we move into the second period. Neither side has made a substitution. I'm sure Crystal Palace, if it stays at 1-1 or if they go behind, will look to the arrival of Ian Wright. Pemberton, who started the second half so sensationally in the semi-final, of course. And very nearly an action replay, Andy. Well, I imagine he'd have done it again. Webb having to retreat. Harassed again by Richard Shaw. But we are entering the phase of the final where fitness will be more and more of a factor, particularly if you're trying to man-mark an opponent. Can Manchester United break it down for Alex Ferguson? Webb. Here's Wallace. Oh, and it'll come for Hughes! Not what you'd call a cup final classic, as goals go. But Alex Ferguson and his players, grateful for it all the same. Well, this tells me that their name's on it. It's a block tackle, and look where it ends up. And Mark Hughes is left foot, and he doesn't usually miss from there. And I think that shows everything about whether Manchester United's name's on that cup. Ball could have gone anywhere, breaks the Mark Hughes, and what a superb strike. We must give him credit for his finish. It was a brilliant strike. I must say they are perhaps the most animated of the, the benches at the top level, Manchester United. They almost move up like a chorus line to register their comments and their protests. Feeling.
This is Webb. He's got the cross in. Hughes will reach it. Wonderful defending by Thorne. It was a cross of quality, a header of quality, and a clearance of quality. Oh, this is a great bit of soccer, as you say. A beautiful cross, a great knockdown from Mark Hughes, and what a superb piece of defending. That might just have killed Palace off. This could really settle it for Manchester United, and all credit to Alan Pardew, who made it difficult for Robson. There have been those who question whether Brian Robson will ever be the uh, same player again after the injuries, and also, of course, uh, remembering he's 33 years old now. Here goes right. There's the acceleration, there's the turn. Is it the goal? I don't believe it! What an arrival! What a substitution! It's 2-2! Oh, this is incredible. It's a great ball through, the combination works well. Shrugs off Mike Phelan, you wonder, is he going to do it? What a magnificent turn from a guy who's been out of the game for a long period. And what a cool finish in his first FA Cup final. Web centre. Robson! <laughs> Manchester United so close to tilting it their way again. What will be the significance of that? Neither team has played for extra time here, but that's what we've got. Crystal Palace 2, Manchester United 2. Both teams have led Palace through Gary O'Reilly, but after Brian Robson's equaliser, Mark Hughes put Manchester United in front. And then the extraordinary contribution of Ian Wright gives us a 90-minute score of 2-2. Here's Salako. Good work from John Salako. Oh, it must be! It is! It's right! Made by Salako. Scored by Wright. And Crystal Palace have got to get their concentration back on maintaining a lead that they've got here incredibly at the start of extra time. Bright. Here's Wallace. And again, found by Webb. Robson, Pemberton stopping him, forcing away through the centre that time. Ince can take it on and can certainly shoot from long range as he showed them. He's been short of goals for Manchester United, but you'll remember in a Littlewoods Cup tie last season against Liverpool for West Ham, he really took that game by the scruff of the neck with his shooting. Gray. Pemberton has beaten Blackmore. Plays it early for Bright, just too early for him, in fact. Now Phelan. He's got Webb inside him. Wallace ahead of Webb. Now Robson. 
Blackmore to the left. McClare floating all over the place now. And Phelan, who's not renowned as a goal scorer, and took Crystal Palace by surprise, really because of that. They might have said, given Michael Phelan's past record, you shoot. But it was far too close for comfort. Oh, he uses his head here, Mike Phelan. He does get into a very good position. It's a bit close to him. He knows he can't get a lot of power into it. So he thinks he'll improvise a bit and comes very, very close to the equaliser. Wallace. Robbins. O'Reilly defending wonderfully well again. Webb takes it up. McClare couldn't control it on the chest. Nigel Martin controlled it with his hands. And what makes this even more captivating is those dramas of the semi-finals because you really do believe that there could be another goal here. I'm not saying for whom. I think after the semi-finals, only a fool would be prepared to say that's it. Wallace, room to turn. Hughes peels off on the run. Hughes! 3-3! Mark Hughes has matched Ian Wright with two goals in this FA Cup final and he earned it with his work off the ball to make the pass possible for Wallace as much as he did with his shot on the turn past Nigel Martin. It is a great little ball and it's a great striker's run away from the defender. He might not have hit it the way he wanted, but look where it's ended up. All season, Crystal Palace have had their problems defensively and they haven't been cool and calm enough to hang on at 3-2 and Manchester United are going for the jugular now Robbins do you think it's all over no <laughs> <laughs> Variation on the corner theme. Blackmore. Oh. It's always been in his range of skills, Clayton Blackmore. The capacity to have a crack at goal from long range, and Manchester United worked this for him. That's a great strike. He comes on to it perfectly. And really, you, you thought at one moment it was in, it just seemed to be dipping, but it just dipped a little bit too late. Free kick to United. Possibly a lucky one, although Danny Wallace applauded the decision. John Pemberton just lost his composure. And Danny Wallace, with the wicked wit of a footballer's dressing room, they call Danny Wallace Hirohito. They reckon he looks more Japanese than English. It's a joke that he takes in good part. Now this is the time to score. When there could hardly be a recovery. Robson! Well, in 1983, Manchester United had to go through a replay after drawing here with Brighton, and Robson got two goals there. This is, fine, sorry, this is a fine header. 30 seconds left. Neil Webb takes it on. Ince. The game being played at the Crystal Palace end. Totally now. And I know the players won't thank me for saying this, but if the replay was going to be anything like this, then I for one certainly wouldn't mind one. It's a corner. 
Well, can Lightning strike twice for Crystal Palace from a left-wing corner? It did in the semi-final for Steve Koppel. Madden to take it. Thorne helps it on. Bright! Can we take much more of this? Hold on till I pick myself up and I'll tell you. Andy Thorne did his part of the job. And Leighton just did touch it, so it's rightly another corner. Scarcely time for it to be taken. We have a replay after a wonderful cup final. Two goals for Mark Hughes for Manchester United. His second, ensuring that United would not be beaten after two goals for Ian Wright. A substitute had tilted it Crystal Palace's way. Manchester United triumphed in the replay by a goal to nil to give Alex Ferguson that elusive first trophy. Lee Martin has come from nowhere. The FA Cup goes to Old Trafford. The captain has a place in history. That's all from FA Cup Classics, but before we go, here's a selection of fantastic FA Cup final goals from recent years to get you in the mood for this weekend's showpiece event.